Hi and welcome to Terry Talks Movies. This time I've got a big haul for you. Not an op shop haul, but a haul of things sent to me by Umbrella Entertainment. Their latest stuff. There is some mind-blowingly good cinema in this lot. I've got two months worth. There was one lot which was delayed because of a manufacturing error on one of the discs. But I'm going to do the other one first. No, I'm going to mix them up. Just going to give them to you, tell you what I think of them. I've watched some of the movies, other ones I haven't yet. So let's get started. This one has an actor in it that I've talked about on the channel before. I did a whole video about him. I've already got a copy of this on DVD from a release which came out about 20 years ago. But this is an incredibly good upgrade. The actor is Donald Pleasant and the movie is Dr. Crippen. That's a really nice little one. The green face in the middle is shiny, but the rest of it is matte, which is kind of nice. That's Region B, this one. I'll tell you if each video is Region B or not. And it's got a J card, so we'll show you the J card first. Dr. Crippen was a guy called Hawley Harvey Crippen, a notorious murderer of the Edwardian age. There's the back of it. The movie's in glorious black and white, so you know it's good. Let me just let that focus so you can freeze it and check out the extras. There's a discussion with Kim Newman on Donald Pleasance, an audio commentary with Jonathan Rigby and Kevin Lyons. There's Murder Maps episode Finding Dr. Crippen and the Stills Gallery. So a lot of stuff there. 1250 limited edition. This is uh, 94 of 1250. And inside you get a lot of other good stuff. In fact, there's a joke on the back of it. It's a slice of wife picture. And on the back of the slipcover, you also get one. The most engaging cut up in all the animal annals of crime. I was going to say animals, but in all the annals of crime. There's a much more uh, wonderful looking very much a 1960s kind of cover art there on the back we've got pretty much the same information as the j card and inside you've got a little bit of donald pleasance there and the disc itself as if that isn't enough in this edition you also get a press book a reproduction of the original press book for the movie lots of cool things like that in it a timeline of dr crippen's crimes is in there as well there's the story of dr crippen laid out there for the people who can't remember it when they go to see the movie and on the back you've got all the essential details that's really cool but there's even more a lot of press cards came with it as well never hold those up straight there's donald pleasant with samantha egger dr crippen being told off by a lady it's another one there Nice deep cut release from Umbrella there. Good way to start out the video as well. Donald Pleasant's Dr. Crippen. Next one I have for you is a weird film from 1972. Um, directed by Edward Dimitrik, starring Richard Burton, Raquel Welch, Joey Heatherton, Marilu Tolo, Verna Lisi, Natalie Delon, a whole bunch of beautiful women, and Richard Burton in Bluebeard. This movie is camp fun. It's a hidden gem. I saw it in the cinema myself. It's a weird one. Bluebeard, of course, you know the story of Bluebeard. Killed his six wives. Not a nice guy at all. And in this version of the story, Richard Burton plays Bluebeard. There's an Austrian baron called Baron von Sepper, who was a World War I flying ace. And in the 1930s, is getting involved with Austrian fascism because rich people did that in the 1930s. He marries an American showgirl called Anne, played by Joey Heatherton. And there are some problems with their relationship. She finds the bodies of his previous wives and finds the stories of how each marriage was how the Baron ended each of the marriages. It's a wild film. It's got beautiful, lush, Art Nouveau style production design. It's got a killer score by Ennio Morricone, which is a bit different from a Morricone score. And it's a lot of fun. There's the front of it. There's your J card. Freeze that one and you'll be able to see all the extras. But you also got, amongst other things, a discussion with Kim Newman of the weirdness of Burton and Taylor's mid later careers. This one I watched yesterday again, and it was fun. It's really tongue in cheek. And Richard Burton himself said the way he approached the role was to emulate Vincent Price. So if that's not worth the price of admission, I don't know what is. There's the inside cover with some interesting artwork there the back you've got all these special features and everything on that as well this one is all region 
it's not locked into region B. Got to be careful because there's a bit of nudity there. There's Joey Heatherton on the disc, and there are the um, ex-wives. But this edition I've got, I've got a few more. It's got some cards. There's Burton with his pet. There's Burton against his um, villa, taking a photo of one of his wives. This um, version of Bluebeard is very into photography. There he is with Joey Heatherton, not treating her well. There are um, a couple of women, one of whom is one of his wives. There he is with Verna Lisi. There he is with Rekka Welch. And there he is with Joey Heatherton again. Uh, there's a lot of nudity in this film, and it's camp silliness. But I've got a bit more with this, which is surprising. And I've got a lot more with this, and it was a bit surprising to get this. It's a facsimile day bill of the poster. Showing the six wives. Burton is Bluebeard. He had away with the world's most beautiful, most seductive, most glamorous women. And he did away with them. If I had room, I would put that up in a frame. This one is a camp classic. It's um, it's a high recommend from me. It's mad, it's dumb, it's over the top. It's, it's very funny in parts. And if you're going to get one of the movies that I talk about in this video, apart from all the others, I recommend that one. A lot of fun. Next up, I've got a couple of collector's editions starring one of the great good bad guys of 1980s, 1990s cinema. They're both pretty damn good. I watched one of these movies yesterday. It held up surprisingly well. I hadn't seen it since VHS days. And the first one I've got for you is... Directed by Robert Harmon and produced by Eric Red, The Hitcher, with Rock Gahauer and C. Thomas Howell in it. It's also got Jennifer Jason Lee. It's about a young guy who's transporting a car across America for somebody who picks up a hitchhiker, which happens to be a guy called John Ryder, played by Rock Gahauer. And it wasn't a good idea to pick him up. He's a serial killer, and his motives are unknowable. He's got a little touch of Heath Ledger's Joker about him, and he is unstoppable. He plays this young man called Jim. He plays the police in a lot of cases. And it becomes a road trip of horror as Jim is trying to escape this guy traveling across the back roads of Texas. Really interesting little film and totally worth it. There was a sequel, but the sequel apparently is a much lesser film. So, of course, you've got the uh, box there. You've got the information on the back again, this one. You got the information on the back there. Again, this one's Region B. Nice piece of slipcase art there. I like the way that one is. Get a different version of the cover art there. This one's got a reversible cover so you can get rid of the Australian censorship clarification on it. So you've got that in there. And a few bonuses. One of which is inside this case you get that poster. There's C. Thomas Howell and the outline of Rob Gahauer. And you also get a horizontal version of the poster there but in this collector's edition you get a bit more you get a book with production notes in there and a lot of information about how the movie was made uh, a lot of quotes from various actors in it again this is another nice release from umbrella you even got the artwork fonts and the kind of fonts i were looking at using for the posters and a number of the different variations of the posters are in there as well so all of that is really cool. Then on top of all that, you get the cards. You get that one. Look at how we're looking pensive and, and caged. There's Jennifer Jason Lee in kind of a thankless role, but she does it very well. See Thomas L. rocking a mullet there. A yeah, really interesting road trip kind of movie. I enjoyed watching this one. There are some really good car stunts. There are some scenes where the suspense ramps up really effectively. And this is very much a, a kind of VHS era thriller. I remember that did really well in the video shops when I was watching it back in the day. And any Rocky Howard movie did well in the video shops. But this one in particular, there was a lot of art, there were a lot of standees and things like this in the video stores at the time. If you're into that 1980s, 1990s cinema, this is one to get. Collector's Edition is a limited edition of 500, and this one is number 86 of 500. Again, if you're into this era of cinema, you're going to love getting the Hitcher. And of course, alternative artwork all the way through it. And while we're on a Rutger Hauer theme, Paul Verhoeven's Flesh and Blood with Rutger Hauer in it, Jennifer Jason Lee again. And a couple of Australian actors are in this, Tom Berlinson and Jack Thompson. 
It's also got Susan Terrell, medieval adventure, very gory and um, quite sanguine in parts. Again, this is a collector's edition. It's only available from the Umbrella Web Store, like the Hitcher. You can only get it online. This one is Region B, limited edition of 300, so it's a little more restricted than the Hitcher one. And it's got some interesting art on the slipcover with Rooker Howe there and the back of someone's head. I love this art. That artwork is really great for that one. And on the back as well. A freeze up again for the special features there for you. There's a lot of good ones. There's interviews with Verhoeven in there and an interview with the composer Basil Polidorus. Again, this has got the reversible cover so you can get rid of the Australian censorship classification on it. And you also get a poster, of course, because of course you do. Nice reversible poster. You can go with that artwork if you choose to. In a savage time torn between two rivals, she's full for survival with the only weapon she had herself. So Jennifer Jason Lee is very central to the story on this one. Again, you've got that wonderful dynamic artwork there. And, of course, because this is a collector's edition, you get the booklet. Lots of interesting stuff about all the actors in there. Ronald Lacey's in there, the guy who played that nasty German Nazi plot in Raiders of the Lost Ark. He's in there as well. Lots of different actors. And you've got that very grimy and grounded look that Verhoeven gave this movie. It really makes you feel the dirt and the, and the smell of the era. And there's posters in there as well. And of course we have the cards. There's Rutger Hauer and Jennifer Jason Lee. Rutger Hauer rocking a codpiece. Nicely composed shot there. Got Verhoeven talking to Jennifer Jason Lee. Tom Berlinson and Jack Thompson. So a little respect for the Australians. Tom Berlinson and Rutger Hauer. Bit of behind the scenes stuff there with the cameras. Looking very anachronistic. And there's a better shot of Rooker with his codpiece. When people talk about Paul Verhoeven movies, they tend to talk about Starship Cribbles and things like that. Whereas a movie like Flesh and Blood, I think, deserves a lot more respect than it got. It really is a fine adventure film and quite nasty and confronting in places. But you should check it out. And, you know, and two Rooker Howard movies in a month from Umbrella is a good deal. You should pick this one up. Still got a lot more to come. There's some really interesting things I haven't talked about yet. Like I said, it's going to be a slightly long video. Let's do the South Korean stuff. This one is a Takeshi Miike movie from 1999, which is very confronting and has stars the same lead actress as Tokyo Gore Police. This collector's edition is an Umbrella Web Store it's exclusive. There are 400 copies of it in this region B. Audition. Really interesting. Uh, I don't want to tell you too much about it. Um, I'll give you the setup. There's a guy who's looking for a wife and his friend's a movie producer. So he sets up a fake audition and pretends that his friend who's looking for a wife is a, a producer for a movie. And so he sets up fake auditions so this guy can try to find women because Tinder hadn't been invented yet. Things go wrong when he finds somebody he's attracted to and she turns out to be not quite as she says she is let's just put it that way it's a horror movie a psychological horror movie and it's quite confronting and has some moments of delicious ick about it so there's the back of it you can freeze on the extras there there are a lot of good extras there and Takeshi Miike is one of those directors whose work you can deep dive and, and go down a total rabbit hole of very varied director who did a lot of good stuff and is still doing a lot of good stuff. Features slipcover artwork, which is quite good in a slightly anime style. There's the back of it. There's your more traditional artwork from the movie there, showing um, the subject of the audition with a syringe, which gives you a little indication about what goes on. There's the back of it with all the extra features as well. And you've got that reversible artwork to get rid of the Australian censorship classification. And you might have guessed there's a poster. Nice reversible poster there. Takashi Miike audition. And the Japanese poster, which I appreciate getting as well. There's always a different aesthetic to the Japanese posters you get with these movies. But there's more. 48 page booklet. It's got the same art as the slipcover. But inside, information on the restoration of the film, which I always like getting. Because I'm fascinated with the way they perk up movies that you think are never going to be good looking and then suddenly magic is done on them by the restoration people and bam, you've got something really special. There's how they adapted the novel. Oh, Mickey, you're so fine. 
you've got to lose Podge for a pun that bad. And the cover, the way they did the cover art, which is very interesting as well. And all of the different posters, of course. But there are also cards, as you might have suspected. Got to be careful in case there's anything a little too icky for uh, YouTube's sensibilities. There's part of the audition process. There are the two guys doing the interviews, who are both bastards. There's a slightly confronting one. There's Mr. Lonely Hearts Not Looking Happy. There's a dinner. I always look things shot through frames, particularly doorways. There's always something really good about them in movies. Here's one of the iconic images of the movie. The actress with piano wire. Really nice set, a really nice release for Umbrella. Really quality. There it is, end on in your bookshelf, looking good. Yeah, really great stuff. Uh, I love Takeshi Miike's work, and I hope that in future Umbrella releases more of it because it really is in the kind of cinema that I enjoy. Now, this director I knew nothing about. South Korean director, my friend Grant Watson over at FictionMachine.com tells me the, this guy is good. And I believe Grant on that. He's my expert on Asian cinema that I know nothing about. Lee Chang Dong, three movies, Peppermint Candy, Oasis and Poetry. And all of them sound intriguing just from the premise. Now I'm going to show you the back. There are a lot of extras on this. So you can freeze that if you want to see what the extras are. And it helps if I hold the J card up correctly. First on Peppermint Candy is about a guy living through the 20 years of South Korean history from the 1980s to 2000 and the different roles he's played it was a time of a lot of change in South Korea and so he's living through a lot of social political and moral changes in South Korea and the movie takes him from the current era backwards in time so it's shot in reverse there's the disc of it which shows the angst and the trauma this guy goes through during all of those changes by the way, all three of these movies are region B. It's been recommended to me by Grant. The second movie, Oasis, is a guy who's released from prison after doing time for hit and run, who gets involved with the family of his victim. And some of the family members are happy about that. Some of them are not. There it is there. And he gets involved with a woman in the family who's the daughter of his victim who has cerebral palsy. And they start a relationship. There's the back cover. It's, it's one of those subjects where you think, would this be a good movie or not? I don't know, but uh, I'm told this one is good. But the one Grant tells me is the best is Poetry, which is about uh, an older woman who's just starting to suffer from Alzheimer's, who finds out that her family isn't what she thought it was and decides to take some steps about that. Her name's Mija. And she finds strength and purpose and a way to have a grace note at the end of her life through a poetry class that she joins. And she finds a way to express how she feels through her poetry. Grant tells me this one is a masterpiece. And I'm willing to believe him. There are some nice commentaries there by Dr. Alexandra Helen Nicholas. And a talk with Li Chang Dong at a film festival. I'm going to dive down this rabbit hole. A lot of my time I'm not looking deeply into deep cinema, into the really, really top stuff. I'm skimming the surface a lot of the time. But these three movies by Lee Chung Dong, I think are going to be three movies by Lee Chung Dong. It's going to take me down a rabbit hole of interesting cinema. According to Sean Bakery, he's one of the most important living directors, and most people don't know about him which is one of the problems with people working in non-Anglophone cinema and non-Western cinema. They can be doing the best movies in the world, but they don't get the space in the cultural zeitgeist that a lot of lesser directors do. And it's great that Umbrella is recognising that and putting these movies out. There are the three of them there. I'm really looking forward to just watching these ones for my own pleasure, not for reviewing on the channel necessarily but just because I want to learn more about this guy and the movies he makes. Next up, we've got something that all, everybody's going to like. Hammer Horror Triple Shock Volume 2. I don't have Volume 1, but that doesn't matter. I've got a lot of these Hammer movies and other editions. Nice slipcase, three movies, one of which I really wanted to have but didn't have a copy of, and the other two I've got a lot of respect for. There's the back cover. And... 
there's a nice little cigarette case for them. Nice bright red and bits on them. And the three movies are The Phantom of the Opera, the version with Herbert Lom in it, which I like a lot. It's got a nice feel about it. This is the kind of stuff that in the early 1960s Hammer did extremely well. A little bit of titillation, a little bit of horror, a little bit of fire. There's Herbert Lom playing the Phantom. There's a bit of the production design, which is quite cool. Even when this one was made, it was a fairly old story. Of course, Lon Chaney did the definitive version back in the silent era. So next one's got Barbara Shelley in it, and Andre Morel, Frida Jackson, Conrad Phillips. Screenplay by George Bax, directed by John Gilling, who did a lot of Hammer Horror. Shadow of the Cat, about a woman who may be a cat like her throat. This is a lower budget Hammer Horror film. And a little bit of a hidden gem. But I've seen it once and I like it. It's got a nice atmosphere to it. There's a back bit with Frida Jackson on it. Most shocking suspense thriller of the year. Not sure if that was entirely true. But still, nice bit of hyperbole. And the third one, which is the one I didn't have a copy of and wanted a copy of, is Night Creatures, also known as Captain Clegg, with Peter Cushing playing a priest on the Kent coast in the 1700s, who's also running a smuggling operation, and he's also a notorious pirate called Captain Clegg. Now, this may sound familiar to people who know the Scarecrow of Romney Marsh, the Disney version of this, which was made a year later, but I like the Hammer version better because it's got a lot more blood, guts, and cleavage in it. There's your Peter Cushing playing the local priest. Of course, it is a dual role in a sense because he is also the retired pirate. And there's the scarecrow a bit like the Disney version. It was based on a character created by Russell Thorndike. He was a British novelist and actor. Like Critches, I like the idea of. And I like a little bit of a different role for Peter Cushing, which is always fun. It's also got the wonderful Milton Reed playing a mulatto, as they called it in the movie. And there is a little bit more with this one as well. You get... A bit of a book for the triple features and an essay about the early 1960s output of Hammer. There's Barbara Shelley. A little bit more of that. Also got a couple of posters. There's a nice Phantom of the Opera one there. And the Captain Clegg one. Oliver Reed's in that movie as well. I didn't mention that. Patrick Allen, Yvonne Romain, Oliver Reed in an early role. And another poster. There's the Spanish version of Shadow of the Cat. And on the back you've got the poster for this particular triple feature. And a few cards as well. There's a double feature that had Curse of the Werewolf and Shadow of the Cat, which was a great double feature. Shadow of the Cat poster. Phantom of the Opera. Uh, the Spanish version of Phantom of the Opera. The German Captain Clegg poster with Peter Cushing. The Spanish one. I'm sorry, the Italian one, is it? Is that, yeah, that is, that's the Italian one, sorry. English language. German. And Phantom of the Opera. So, another nice Hammer release from Umbrella. You can never have too many good Hammer releases. And I really appreciate that. I'm going to watch Captain Clegg, also known as Night Creatures, as soon as possible. I've left the biggest one for last. This is heavy. This, when I picked up the box, I went, what the hell is in this? And the answer is... Simply, Super Mario Brothers, an enormous, enormous set from Umbrella of the 1990s Super Mario Brothers with John Leguizamo and Bob Hoskins and Dennis Hopper. This is an enormously premium edition and it's a 4K so it's not region locked. Let me get everything out of the box. I'll show you the back of the box with so many special features in it. Take a look at that lot. So many special features in it. There's the um, two guys, the two plumbers, Mario and Luigi, of course. I'll do the disc first rather than the plethora of extras that we have. There's a cover art on the slipcover, which is quite fun and cartoony. Trust the fungus. It's 4K Blu ray, so you get both. All the good formats. There's your discs, there's your 4K, there's your Blu-ray, there's an extra disc in there as well. 
of extras and you also get the posters inside this one's got to be a vulgar pleasure people who were kids in the 90s are going to love this stuff and i kind of like it but there is some very sketchy cgi in it because it's a very early era of cgi japanese poster of super mario bros and that one as well which i think may be thai it still looks really good but that's not the heavy stuff we'll do the cards next because there are cards there's your mario and your luigi there's um, uh, mario dancing because bob hoskins busting a move there's one of the not happy people some of the production design beautiful stuff there's the city where all the lizard people live in the alternate universe there's a little lizard there's dennis hopper with an interesting hairstyle there's the brothers but there's a lot more got a 35 mil production still in there which i haven't quite figured out what it is yet but it is a production still from the movie in a nice little case with magnetic clips so quality there the official movie magazine you've got a facsimile edition of the official movie magazine see skybox because great cars are hard to find and it's got all of that kind of gear in it from the 1990s so it's a nostalgia packed extras on this one you get stickers some umbrella ones and also some super mario brothers ones there i always like a few stickers never take them off the sticky bit and put them on anything but i like having them there are a couple of scripts for this so super mario brothers the scripts be a goomba which have the scripts to the movie which is mind-blowing as an extra but the heavy bit is this ain't no game a collection of behind the scenes experiences and art which is a hardcover book lots of tons of stuff inside look at that lots of production stuff the detail about this movie that you get with this package is incredible it's probably one of the most complete and comprehensive versions of any movie that i've seen in a box set it puts criterion to shame just totally wild now this one's a limited edition of 2250 and no this is a ch it's going to sit chunky on the shelf but i think it's totally worth it I i'm just blown away by the amount of detail in this one it's like it must have been a lot of work for a lot of people for a lot of time to put this one together and i know there were production problems with the discs which is why the release of it was delayed and which is why my order of it was delayed so it came roughly at the same time as the other things that i've got here if you're a fan of super mario brothers or even if you're just a fan of, of weird 1990s movies you're gonna love that and if you are a collector of movie information particularly you're going to get a lot out of this one there is just so much stuff having the entire scripts for a movie isn't something you normally get in a box set but in this one you do and all respect to umbrella for putting this one together mind-blowingly great detail so that's it for this time around all of these boxes and movies are incredibly in my wheelhouse and in my taste of movies thank you to umbrella for giving me the opportunity to review them i'm gonna have to just cut myself a week and sit on the couch risk the possibility of bed sores and watch everything here really impressive deliveries from umbrella and i know in the upcoming months i've got some more really mind-blowingly good stuff as well which i'm looking forward to so that's it for this time around thanks a lot for watching there's been a long one but so much good stuff here if you enjoyed the video please like subscribe hit the notification bell look at some of the playlists particularly the umbrella releases that i've reviewed before there's a lot of good stuff in there you can also donate to the channel via the usual youtube thing or by becoming a patron at patreon.com slash terry talks movies got a lot of stuff to do for the rest of the week and then of course we roll into science fiction saturday at the end of the week i'm also doing a live stream in the morning here in australia on the 29th of february because leap years only come around once every four years so i thought i'd do an extra live stream this month and just have a little bit of fun with it not sure what i'm doing for the live stream but i'm going to really have a bit of fun with that and until then watch some good movies watch some bad movies watch some new movies watch some old movies 
watch some South Korean cinema you know nothing about and have your mind blown. And I'll catch you next time.